morning. Uh, this, is a, this is another uh, video in this series on the question of Chachma versus Nevoah, wisdom versus revealed prophecy, and which one is higher? Now, I know David said I didn't need to make another video. For me, it's much easier to make a video. I, my time is very limited, especially when it's easy to just type. It's not that easy uh, to type on a phone like that, but when I'm, I'm driving, today I'll be spending about three hours in the car, so I have plenty of time to make videos. And also, uh, I don't know if it's really selfish or it's just... Um, or if it's just uh, uh, imaginary, it's just a pipe dream. But it's, we're, um, you know, YouTube about oh, a, a little over a year ago, they changed their rules that you have to have a thousand subscribers. It used to be that you needed 10,000 views to be monetized. So I used to get a check here and there. It wasn't much, but it was, it was nice, you know, to. <laughs> To, to have some fruit of your labor on YouTube and to, uh, you know, probably get about uh, four or five hundred dollars a year. It's not nothing. Uh, now uh, they changed it that you have to have a thousand subscribers, which I do, and four thousand hours of views, which, which I don't. <laughs> so the more uh, folks are watching, it gets me to that four thousand hours. So that's why I make videos. Uh, I'm a little tired, so it's not, you know, it's first thing in the morning. But it is what it is. I put filling on already. And I'm on my way to work. So, the, the question is, which is really higher? Wisdom or prophecy, and we have to understand that Torah wisdom, and, and specifically not just any theocracy, but is a mosaic Torah theocracy greater than modern than modern uh, democracy? And again, the answer is there's a time and a place for everything. That's what Scripture tells us. Everything there's a time and a season, and a time for every purpose under the heaven. And so there's a time for theocracy and a time for democracy. That's the way God designed it. So, it's not that, alright, this is now the time, and this is not now, the, it, 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 there's no one answer for all time, for all people, for all places. We have different answers for different times, different people, and different places. And so, what works right now, it's not like, oh, Nebuch, this is God's design for right now. This is what I believe. I know other people disagree with me. They'll say, no. It's, uh, it, 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 you know, we're, we're in a, a fallen state. But the fallen state is also part of God's plan. You know, I know this, uh, that's part of maybe the Ishbitzer theology, which I know was, was, was very controversial. But the level of providence... Meaning, it, it, the world wasn't designed 3,000 years ago to have this type of government, but right now it is. And a thousand years from now, it'll be something else, most likely, again, will be evolved to the point where we'll just naturally be <laughs> following the Word of God, and the nation will not lift up sword against nation, neither will we learn of war anymore. And all of these things are part of that process of how we get there. Uh, and again, it could happen instantly, but the, the 
point is, and, and there's nothing we really we need to do to get there. The fact of the matter is, part of our uh, work is, 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 you know, our work as Jews is to be dedicated to the Torah. Which means, even if something is part of God's plan, which we might know or might not know, and we don't know. I, you know, all I'm saying here is in a theoretical sense, not in a, you know, these are nice drushes, but, they, I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't know for sure. all about, you know, when we get to these points, you know, what are we, what are we doing, what are we talking about, and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's God's plan. But certain things, <coughs> you know, within such a system, we're supposed to oppose. And I think a lot of it has to do not it's a lot of these things are not universal. A lot of these things are community by community, and each community has its role. You know, and I'll I'll, I'll bring up a, a, a more controversial subject with Zionism, and I'll, I'll tell you a story. I don't know if it's true or not, but it's a good story, and I believe it's probably true. I mean. You, you, when you use the term the Torah Karta, people automatically think of, uh, you know, like you strolled them advice, who I know I've met, you know, you're in Muncie, you run into this guy, you know, you go to Hasanas in Muncie, you go to weddings in Muncie, you're going to run into Moshe Berbeck, you know, he, he goes around collecting money for various causes, generally for Jews in Jerusalem, that's who he's collecting money for. And uh, so you know you run into these guys, and I don't agree with with them. I, am I told uh, he's told them advice? You know, I, I uh, my problem with him is his disrespect for those who disagree with him. Even if sometimes he brings up a good point, but deal with it in a respectful way. Um, and, it, and it's not Torahic the way um, I can be stuck behind this truck. You know the way that that that, that he conducts himself, and some of the other the neo that they'll go and uh, you know I remember. Uh, Baron, Baron Leib Steinemann came to speak in Borough Park, and we, we wanted to see, so we went, you know, couldn't really hear him very well, and a lot of people there, and meanwhile, the, the B'nai Ol, they were, and the, and the Terry Carr said they were protesting, and he wasn't coming and speaking about politics, that's stupid, you go protest, so you just don't go, it wasn't your business. But on the other side, which was also wrong, the Gerach Hasidim with were throwing eggs on the on the, the Torah Karta. It's much worse. And uh, it's, it's, it's exponentially worse. I'm not saying that that represents all Gerach Hasidim. This is from Pennsylvania, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be following this guy the whole way, aren't I? Let's see if I think over here there's enough physical. But there's a car there. Yes, um, here. Let's see if uh, I can't see what's over. Maybe over the next hill I can see. So anyway.
car moves. So, the You know, the thing is, is that we can we can agree to disagree. You know, I know one one rebel who I'm very friendly with. He told me a very smart thing. He said, you know, the, the Hasidim that he has now, and he's Baruch Hashem, he's growing, and he and he, and he deserves it as a Voilead. You know, he. Uh, his, his chassim, they ask him, and they, they, they live in Israel. Should they go to Bechiris? Should they vote? And they want to do what the rabbit does. And his answer is, well, what does your father do? If your father doesn't vote, I don't want to make have you make problems in your house. That's, there's no need for that. And if your father votes, I, I, I also don't want to make problems the other way. So... Uh, You know, you, you have to you have to use wisdom in these types of things, and that's and, and that's smarter than saying, well, you know, I mean, prophecy is is quite often like a my way or the highway type of thing. It's like, well, this is what the prophet said, and and so we must do this. Wisdom, you stop and think. Well, what does this actually mean? And the thing is, is where where does our wisdom come? From. Where does Torah wisdom come from? It comes from prophecy. I mean, it's prophetically based wisdom. Not that the wisdom itself is the prophetic word, but the wisdom is the extrapolation that was in the potential of the prophetic word, and, and in a certain sense, it's guided by providence that this wisdom reaches which person not in a certain sense in a total sense uh, this car, one problem is too small and if I'm going to wear my hat I'm going to be hunched over have a bad back I, don't have, I, don't have, I can't do that today I'm a wedding on my way home from work so I hope so I hope I get home in time this is just really pushing it on Arab Shabbos So, Kabbalistically, uh, wisdom is higher, though, than prophecy. Prophecy comes from Netzach Vahod, which are connected very much to this world. You know, they're very close. And there's Yisod. We're, we're now in, in the week of Hod. And we're entering the week of Yisod, and there's Malchus. That's this world. We're talking Sphere Saomer. Connected. And Chachma is, is, is all the way up on top. And, 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 I don't want to get too much into Kabbalistic issues like that. But certainly Chachma is higher than Netzach and Hod. But it's all one. You know, the, the seeming dichotomy of the world is the truth is it's all one. So, Apparently, one way doesn't mean it is. So, God is guiding everything that's going on. But from a Torah perspective, the Torah tells us, Torah lo the Torah is not in heaven. Lo And when the way we are taught that is that wisdom supersedes Torah. It, it supersedes, meaning the Torah was given, the prophecy was given, and now it's our job to use wisdom to extra- extrapolate that that given prophecy in a way that's that's um, that society can exist. So that's why Greek wisdom not sustain this. 
there needed to be the Torah wisdom that is rooted in prophecy that now could exist in, in, in a usable form. And that's why, you know, meaning America being based in Torah ideology is that fulfillment for now. I'm not saying for the millennium, but for now. Being that the, the basis is in what they call Judeo-Christian ethic, and the fact is there are certain things that are not so obvious but come right out of the Torah. And I, I believe that those concepts... are guided by that that Torah wisdom. For example, uh, I, I'm sitting talking about the executive aspect of America, the federal aspect of America, these ideas that come straight out of Torah. So, for example, president has to be a natural-born citizen. He's not, he cannot be an immigrant has to be born a citizen. So too, in Torah, I mean, his parents could be immigrants, but he has to be natural. So too, in Torah, the king has to be a natural-born Jew, natural-born Israelite. His parents, his grandparents could be converts, but he himself has to be born Jewish. Um, Jerusalem, you know, I mean, the ancient Israel was, was divided into 12 tribes, but Jerusalem was situated between the two tribes of Judah and Benjamin. And the federal city, Washington, D.C., also doesn't belong to any of the 50 states or the original 13 colonies. Now, how close that is, the 13, that in a Koilo, well, and they really weren't, they originally were 12 colonies that became 13 states, so it's really uh, in the root, also back to the 12 tribes type of thing. I'm not saying in an absolutist sense, I'm not saying in a halachic sense, I'm saying in the, in the sense that how God guided uh, providence and and so too uh, now with all of these things being said I know I say that a lot I gotta stop that or maybe it's my catchphrase I don't know but the The essence of, of all of these ideas in, in Torah. Also, we have to understand that we have to be faithful to God and His Word, even when it's not so obvious to us. Even when it would seem it would make sense the, the opposite. And, and so that's where we need prophecy to guide us. But it's, it, they're both, there it has to be the mix of prophecy and wisdom. I mean, halacha doesn't exist in a purely prophetic form. Halacha, Jewish law, exists in the wisdom form. Meaning, decisions that were made by the Sanhedrin. That's what's binding on all Jews. And then the halakhic process of you know, different opinions and the consensus that develops. And quite often we might not 
have the same reasons for coming to this consensus, but it, it, be, it becomes a consensus. And so, like we've discussed about electricity on Shabbos, the consensus is we're not allowed to use electricity on Shabbos. The reasons why, the, 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 those reasons vary. But the consensus is we don't do it. Even if 100 years ago, people did. find pious Jews and Talmudic Chachamim, the Torah scholars, they did. Today it's generally accepted. This is not something we do. Whether it's because of the reason the Chazanish said, or it's the reason that the uh, that Yitzchak Chanan said, or that, that, that this one said, that that one said. But the, whatever it is, it's, uh, or it's like Rav Shlomo Zalman said, we just don't know. But it is what it is. Oh, there's a school bus up there. So anyway, that's how halacha works. But then uh, beyond halacha, there's hashkafa, it's ideology. Beyond law, there's ideology, and again, different issues that we have to deal with. The the story that I always hearken back to, and this story is, is useful for so many things, is Hezekiah. It's a story we find both in Kings and in Isaiah. I think it might appear in Chronicles as well, if I'm not mistaken. The fact that it's repeated in Isaiah, though, which is not a history book, and yet there are a few historical, I mean, none of these books are history books in the way we consider it, but I'm talking in the biblical history uh, genre. That... The fact that Isaiah tells the story shows that it is prophetic. But then the way the sages teach it shows the wisdom. And there, we have to have a holistic approach that includes both. Oh, pheasants, those are cute birds. <laughs> so the Sorry, the um, I don't put my pay is up already. I'm going to work. I don't. So the the meaning here with uh, I'm so exhausted. talking about here with the with the story of Hezekiah and Isaiah. So in the Bible Isaiah approaches Hezekiah and tells him uh, well you're, you're going to die and you're not going to live. And then Hezekiah turns to the wall and he prays and 15 years are added to his life. Clocks turned back, you know, the sundial, different story. The sages tell this story as follows Isaiah approaches Hezekiah and says, You're, you're going to die and you're not going to live. You're going to die in this world and you're not going to live in the next world. And Hezekiah said, What do you mean? I've been. Hezekiah, according to the sages, could have been the Messiah. So 
what, what did I do that's so bad? So what did you do? The first commandment, be fruitful and multiply. You never got married. You're living a celibate lifestyle. That's not acceptable. It, 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 it smacks in the face of the Torah. Hezekiah says, Isaiah, you're a prophet and I'm a prophet. I saw I'm going to have a son, Manasseh. Manasseh. He's going to... He's going to... He's going to be wicked like my father was. I'd rather not have a child like this. Isaiah said, that's none of your business. God said, be fruitful and multiply. And that's the thing, that's the Davidic line. Eventually, Mashiach is going to come from, from this line. You're preventing, if you're not going to be the Mashiach, you're preventing the Mashiach from coming. He was the Mashiach of his time. He was the anointed king, but meaning the, the old, what we're looking forward to, the, Messi, the Messiah, the Messianic age, when the whole world is perfected. Hezekiah was supposed to be that, and he, and he failed. And so, uh, Hezekiah said, well, you know, Isaiah, I, I'm a righteous man, you're a righteous man. He, 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 I, I understand you have a daughter who's available, right? Uh, maybe we'll make a shit of. I'll marry your daughter. He'll have a son, he'll have a righteous father. And a righteous Seda, a righteous grandfather. And uh, hopefully, there's a low fox and a Voilaid, you know? He'll grow up to be a pious All right, it's a deal. Make the shit of. And so Hezekiah, he got up and prayed by the wall, and uh, meaning not the western wall. He was praying by by the wall next to his bed, and he was healed. And he and 15 years were added to his life. But this kid. King, and he was one of the longest serving kings. And we know most of his life, he was no good. The legend says that he actually killed his grandfather Isaiah. Who I guess outlived his son in law, uh, Chizkyo, Hezekiah. And so, so Menashe killed Yeshio and Avi. And, and, but then, at the end of his life, he did do tshuva. He did repent. But the lesson of this story is that we have to, no matter what we think is going to happen, even what prophecy tells us, we have to follow halacha. We have to follow the Torah. So, for example, you might say, and the Briskarov says like this, and I don't mean this as an insult to Christians. I'm just talking, there's a difference between Christianity and Judaism. I mean, this is an insult to Muslims, but again, there's a difference between Islam and Judaism. But the, uh, the Rambam says, Maimonides says, it's, it's at the end of, of the Rambam, the end of, of, of Helchus Malach. He says that it was part of God's design. that even though Christianity and Islam brought so much pain and suffering to the Jewish people, and it's so obvious that Jesus was not the Messiah because all, it was the exact opposite. He himself said, I, I come not to bring peace but the sword. And so therefore, and, and we're looking forward to a Messiah who's going to bring peace. And, and he brought the sword. <laughs> we had, how many, you know, we had 2,000 years wars and so forth. I'm not blaming Christianity necessarily for that. It's just part of the regular human condition. But it's, you know, and, and the fact is Christianity has brought a lot of good things to the world. 
but it didn't directly bring peace to the world. And the same thing, of, obviously, with Islam. He, he, you know, Muhammad never claimed to be Messiah, but. Uh, But the fact of the matter is, is that these two religions, as much as they parochially for our community have made our lives much worse, but for the whole world, generally, it's been an improvement over paganism. It's been an improvement over the way things were before these became the dominant religions in the world. And, and the God's plan to bring messianic in. That the people will see when the real Mashiach comes, it won't be such a big transition. Because they'll already know about God, they'll already know about Torah. And it won't be they won't be coming from worshiping Odin or Zeus or something like that. They'll be coming from a place where, where they already, you know, they're already reading the stories of, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, that Moses and Aaron and David and so forth and so on. It's, it's not going to be a surprise. It's not going to be totally out of left field. And so these religions are part of the process of bringing Mashiach. Now does that mean that we should be supporting them uh, in a major way? Now, we can be friendly with them and, and find alliances when when it's necessary but is it but, but but that's not what I'm talking about having allies I'm talking about you know do, 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 should we should we be giving donations to, for the upkeep of, of the church or the mosque the answer is no let them do that we have enough things that we have to worry about in our community. Certain times when we have to focus in on ourselves. Of course, if we, if we want to give to charitable causes that, that help people, including ones that are, that are faith-based from other faiths, that's a different story. Also, it has to be guided in a halakhic way. It's not so simple. Uh, the, obviously, the, the Jewish charities have to come first. But of course, what, what's a Jewish charity? Meaning a, a true Torah charity, not a not one of the not the not the JNF, you know, not the Jewish National Fund. And with that being said, the same could be true, you know, and we don't know, now Maimonides was stating his opinion, it doesn't mean that that's gospel truth, if you'll excuse the term. It's an interesting opinion, and it makes sense, but again, that doesn't mean that we're supporting these things, so the same thing, a lot of rabbis have stated their opinion that the state of Israel is the first flower of the redemption type of thing all this nonsense that they say even if it were true which I don't believe it to be I believe it to be uh, like uh, you'll excuse the term like antichrist I don't mean anti Jesus I mean anti which is I mean, I mean like the word Christ mean Christos meaning Messiah, it's it's holding back the real Messiah from coming, who, who's not Jesus, goes without saying, I'm, I'm, I'm at least from our perspective as, as Orthodox Jews, but the, uh, you know, the Gemara says, Ain't been David Baj, Israel, Messiah won't come until, the son of David won't come until the pettiest government ceases among Israel. And so it's holding Mashiach back from coming. That's my belief. But even if, let's say it was um, part of this process of bringing Mashiach. 
it, does that mean that we have to support it when it's so obviously antithetical to Torah? You know? And so that's the... Uh, that, that's, that's, you know... But on the other hand... Uh, is there a certain wisdom in some of these things and bringing democracy and so forth meaning meaning what would be better right now in Israel a more secular American style democracy or a, or a religious state I, 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 like I said in the previous video a religious state won't work it simply won't work until, until you have prophecy guiding it it's just not going to work. I mean, the, the, the situation they have now also doesn't work. You know, but that's, that's the issue. So, so, essentially, that's what we're dealing with. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe, comment. Um, so, which is higher? Chachma, Nevoa, they're both very high. We need both, but the, the Chachma has to come from Nevoa. And, uh, you know, Neitzach Vahod, Yunikas and Aviyam. But, uh, that, 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 that Nevoa has to be tampered by Chachma. And you have to have the, the balance. So, so, yeah, so you're not going to have. The, uh, you know, we're, we're not going to just go and, and be Bible thumpers and saying, look, the Bible says in this week's Parsha, they will serve you forever. We uh, the, the Torah says slavery. Common sense tells us no. It's the, we, we don't have slavery today. And thank God. But 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 look, it's in the Torah. Now the thing is, so then what? So then are you going to say the same thing about Tefillin, though? You know, are you going to say the same thing about Shabbos? Oh, we, we, we progressed beyond that. No. Because we haven't. And we won't. We never will. Because Shabbos is, is such a lofty, great thing. And, and, and we need the wisdom of Torah wisdom to guide us. And Halacha to guide us. That's the way, uh, you know. So, uh, so no, we'll, we'll we'll always have Shabbos. You know, we'll always have parents. We'll always have Shabbos. And it, it's a romantic thing. We'll always have Shabbos. That's part of our relationship with God. But the slavery, it's not part of it. Polygamy, it's not part of it. We we'll always have to have polygamy just just because the Torah says so. And I know some people that that's what they believe. Well, if the Bible says it, then, then we have to have it. That's that's a, a silly approach to to prophecy and scripture. So that, that's what I mean. If you just have plain prophecy without wisdom, then you're gonna it's 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 the solo scriptura. It's the Sadducees. Who, who stone people in the street? It's the Taliban. It's uh, you know, it, it's that's not that's not that's that's not a society that's sustainable. And so people are going to be like, yeah, this. I have to get into that lane. I could have made the right turn before. I want to get to work. I... Whatever it is. All right. So that's that's what I have to say. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. Is it making sense what I'm saying? I don't know if it is. You know, meaning we 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 have to have both. We have to have. You can't have. 
just plain prophecy without wisdom. Meaning, even when when the prophecy when when we had a theology a theocracy, it was run by wisdom. It wasn't run by the trunk is open. What? Why does it smell like? Is that my car? God bless. Take care.